Okay, so here we are uh, seven days later and lots has happened within our compost pile. And there's many ways that we can monitor what's happened. But the most important way to monitor is to look at the temperature. In this situation and in the situation that you're going to be applying yourself to, you want to now look at three regions of the compost pile because there will be three maybe different readings and we'll talk about why that would be. This first reading is from the probably the first like uh, two or three inches on the top of the compost pile. It's where there's most access to oxygen. And this reading is 137. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna measure the middle of the compost pile. The middle of the compost pile is literally what we would call like the core temperature. And in, in essence, it's really the sort of core of the digestion that's happening in this compost. And we're really concerned here as to whether or not it's getting enough oxygen, there's enough nutrients. The temperature will tell us a lot with regards to that. Because we did such a good job sort of constructing this pile, it has appropriate aeration, it has appropriate moisture, it's falling within about the realm that I would expect it to, which is 130 degrees, which means that it's still metabolizing, it's still a little bit active, but actually it needs oxygen. So that is why we're going to be turning it. Later, is it needs to have an introduction of oxygen because if I did not turn it, the temperature would start to precipitate down to 120, 110 in the next couple of days. Now, lastly, let's take temperature from the bottom of the compost pile. The reason why we would do this is because that is where there's the least amount of oxygen, um, it's really giving us information as to, did we have a good recipe, a lot, enough porosity? Maybe there's too much water in the bottom of the pile. This is an exercise that one should go through uh, every day or so at the uh, stage that this compost pile is in, just so that you know that it's behaving as it should. So here, the temperature is uh, 110 degrees. So as I've been talking about, that would tell us that there's not enough oxygen at the bottom of the pile. That means there'll be less decomposition. And it could also be indicative that there's not enough moisture at the bottom of the pile. So as we start to turn it, we're gonna look and investigate and we may need to add some more water. Okay, as you will see, this is, will be our second turning. And you will see that the pile has already transformed quite a bit. But the first order of business is to take all the material that is on the outside that is quite dry because it acted as a skin for the rest of the compost pile and that will get a good dosing of water. As we're pulling the dry material off the pile, we will put it as the first layer and it's essential that this gets enough moisture, as much moisture as you applied when you first made the pile. You need to saturate it with moisture. Then you can see, once the skin is removed, the compost pile itself has a nice amount of moisture. This is what has contributed to a more brown color. Interestingly, the compost pile starts to lose all of the arrays of colors that it used to have, all the greens and maybe colors from flowers or other ingredients that you put in, colors from the leaves. Now it's starting to become a more uniform color. Don't freak out if the material is rather dry. Make sure that you put it on the bottom of the pile where you're turning it to next. It will absorb all the moisture that you're starting to put for the new location. Now you're going to begin digging into the pile. It's interesting to notice that this second turning is still needing quite a bit of moisture. This is because the microorganisms, as we showed in the temperature readings, have multiplied and have created a lot of wonderful heat in the compost pile. But as they've multiplied, they need more resources. They need the oxygen, which will help them metabolize, and they need the water. In essence, you could start to be, think about that the water that you're adding now will be incorporated into the humus and the compost as a finished product. As you can see, the pile that we're looking at has shrunk 
since we originally built it. It is no longer as high, nor is it as wide or as long as when it was first built. However, when you are turning the pile, it is important that the volume that you're moving over now has a restorative height of three feet and the length and the width of the pile will be in relationship to that. You may need to adjust it as you're moving it over. That's okay, you can take your pitchfork and adjust it, but it needs to all be in relationship to itself. It's really important to inspect the compost pile to see the moisture content. As you can see in this area, it's dry. It's on the outside of the pile and it needs more moisture. Interestingly, right here in the middle, you can see there's a little white mold and it is not as moist as it needs to be, even though it is in the middle of the compost pile. Out on the edge, it's dry and it shows us why we need to mix the pile so that there's more uniformity. Again, at this stage, it needs to be as moist as if you are grabbing it in your hand and a little drops of moisture are emerging from it. As you can see, the moisture is dripping from this part of the pile, but another part of the pile, if you were to take it in your hand and squeeze it, you will see there's no drops of moisture. A good analogy to think about adding water to your compost pile is like you've started with a small village. That was what we originally had when we built our first pile two weeks ago. Now the population has grown substantially. Even though we can't see it with our visible eye, there is a population boom in this compost pile. So the population has grown to such an extent that you no longer have a small town, but you actually have a city. So within the city, you have to deliver more water because the residents living within the city now, of course, need it to live and survive. The same is true with your compost pile. There are millions more microbes living within this ecosystem of a compost pile and they need water and air to survive. At this stage, while you're turning your compost pile, be very selective. Look at what the characteristics are of your pitchfork full and decide if it's dry, it should go towards the middle of the pile. If it's moist, it can go more towards the outside of the pile. As you can see now, it's important to shape the pile too, to keep in your mind the importance of the dimensions. You want to make the pile not as long or as wide as the one you're turning it from because you want it to be a bit taller Remember, the mass of the pile is important. The mass is what will hold in the moisture and will keep the oxygen at appropriate levels. If the pile is too short, it will dry out too quickly. If the pile is too long or too wide, it will also dry out too quickly. It needs to have a nice round mass. Notice, if you will, how the interior of the pile has started to turn brown. This is the beginning of the transformation. It's a little bit of the mystery that takes place in composting. Occasionally, you tamp the sides with your pitchfork because as you're adding air, as we're turning and fluffing up the materials, you don't want it to be too fluffy and aerated because it will dry out too quickly and defeat the purpose of why you're adding moisture today. Tamping the compost pile is similar to the kneading bread. Those of you that have ever made bread and you knead the dough, you are introducing oxygen as you are kneading it, but you're also compacting the dough and moving it into form. The same is true when you're making and turning the compost heap. You're adding oxygen, but you want to keep good form. This is a demonstration of how you would widen your pile. If you have miscalculated the volume of material that you need to move and the new dimensions that you're making, this is how you would alter the size of the pile that you're making. 
As you can see, there's still quite a bit of material that is left to be turned to the new location. So by readjusting and making a shelf of sorts that allows you to add more material and still hold on to the integrity of your new pile. Again, take care to mix the dry materials into an area of the pile where it will get moisture and be insulated from the drying effects of the outside. What if you didn't have moisture available to you, like a hose to make your pile wet? One could also make your compost pile by taking into account the seasons in which you're composting. If you live in a climate where it rains often in the fall or the winter, you could time the, when you make your compost pile for that time of year and let the rain moisten your pile. Conversely, if you live in an area where it rains all year round and moisture is a problem, then it would be important to make sure you don't have too much moisture in your compost pile and you may need to protect your pile by putting tarps or dry straw to act as a skin to keep the pile from getting too moist. Too much moisture will limit the amount of oxygen that can impregnate the compost pile. As you can see here, the bottom of the compost pile seems to have enough moisture. But if you remember, when we were measuring the temperature of the bottom of the compost pile, it was the coldest. We were suggesting that either it did not have enough moisture or it did not have enough oxygen for the bacteria and fungus to be metabolizing. Now we can see that there was enough moisture at the bottom of the pile. There was not enough oxygen. So it's a good thing that we are turning it. Another indicator that there's not enough oxygen at the bottom of the pile is that it gave off a sulfury ammonia type smell. If the pile is too dry, you will start to encounter ants or other critters move into your compost pile. Ants are a good indication that your pile is too dry and they move in to rob the ingredients that are there and take it back to their nests. The final touches, making the top of the compost pile even and rounded to keep the moisture in. Form and function. And never forget that you're making art and something beautiful that sits on the land and contributes to your farm. The compost pile is the basis of a new generation of life. Don't forget to put in the thermometer and take temperatures every day. <laughs>